And so looking at how people, you know, were, were um, giving Joe certain respect, like we walk, you know, he said, you know what? I walk through the airport and they respect me. And, and sometimes I don't like how they treat you guys. When I see mm. them, you know, oh. they, 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 you guys walk up to, and now you look like a group. Uh, like you look like a big group again, of people you're are, are looking at like you know <laughs> they don't like right. well and he said so let's try something we were going overseas one time he said um yo man I want everybody dressed in some hard bottoms and some slacks with a button up or a suit whatever you know Blazer, you know, a trench he was like and watch the res- watch the, the respect that we get when we walk through the airport and literally from the time we walked in the airport as a group dressed that way People, we could not, we couldn't get two feet without people stopping to ask who we were. Wow. And so he literally changed my whole perspective on how just what you look like and and people eyesight can change how they view you, how they, how they, how they interact with you and the Mm -hmm. respect that they give you. Hey, welcome to Cross Bars, the podcast where we discuss interesting topics with alternative perspectives. I'm your co-host, Big O. I have with me. Hey, Jay Tanay is back in the building one more time with our guest, Mr. Willie Bam Bam Parker. Give it up, give it up, give it up. <laughs> Master percussionist, <laughs> the drummer of the century. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Okay, <laughs> drum of the century. All right. I was looking hey, up hey, drum of the Yeah, you know, we you, said you, drummer, you got to put it in oh. the air. Oh, you got to put it in the air. Oh, bars, 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 bars. Oh, yeah. Bars, yes, yes, yes. He got it. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, first and foremost, let's get let's get some of the basics out. Where are you from originally? Um, so I'm from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Whoa. We're, okay. We're Smart born, born live mostly in Stratford. I uh, was raised in Stratford. I did a little oh, lived yeah, in well, Florida for from. a little while. Oh, you wait, know, whoa, 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 slow up. <laughs> Try to skip over some things. You, yeah. you grew up in, okay, not a Bridgeport. Okay, so, smart people. So I, so I was born in Bridgeport. Okay, lived out in Stratford, uh, the big loan place where everybody got yeah. the student loans from. Then you went to Florida. Okay, you got, you got yeah, Florida yeah. out there. Uh, as uh, about, how long was you in Florida? Man, until I was about seven. Okay, still young. Okay. They didn't taint you because if you're a Florida boy, they didn't you taint me. All right, yeah. Because I'm like, are you a Connecticut or you call yourself a Florida boy? Because that. <laughs> Florida. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm from Connecticut. Okay, yeah. there we go. Yeah. There we go. All right, then for Florida, then what? Then where do we go? That's it. Just those two, man. Okay, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Wait. So you was in Florida from seven until adulthood? No, uh, I, I came back to I came back to Flo- uh, Connecticut, Connecticut when I was seven. Ooh, thank God. Yeah. Right. Back to All Connecticut. Right. Ooh, okay. That's good. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. You went so, from yeah. from the sun to the cold. To the cold. <laughs> to the cold. <laughs> to the cold. Yeah, well, how was that transition? Like, you couldn't tell you, like, because I was man, kinda... I actually, man, I actually lost my father when I was seven, which, which um, actually um, had my mom want to move back up to Connecticut. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. I understand. So uh, your dad you... was from Florida? He was from Florida? No, he, 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 my, my father was originally from uh, Kinston, North Carolina. Oh, wow. And so he was tall. Him. Yeah, every, everybody from Kinston was tall. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, that must be Skip Tim. Oh, no. <laughs> no, you know, hold up. Did your dad hoop? Because, you know, everybody from Kingston, North Carolina can hoop. My, my, my pop, my dad was actually more of a music guy, man. Mm. Gotcha. He got yeah. it on his then, though. He got look, it on his That's still and, South. And, and, South, you know, they, nah, got them, they got it in the nah, room. Kingston, they, they either music, hooping, or just straight up ladies, man. So he, yeah. he got two of the three. I got <laughs> you. <laughs> Definitely was a definitely was a charmer. Yeah, yeah, he got yeah, I got you. <laughs> you know, I got you. Kinston, shout out, <laughs> Big Mike, <laughs> I skinny Big Mike out there, my man. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Everywhere got a Big Mike. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, no, nah. skinny Big Mike, he thorough. He, he down Atlanta now, but that's that's my man. Um, skinny Big Mike. So so now you're you're back in Connecticut. So yep. um, were you the type of kid that you were always artsy or, you know, the parents gave you an instrument, just, you know, stop bothering her. Your mom's like, look, I'm going to give you some, some stuff. Because, you know, they try to throw you in piano lessons in a heartbeat. 
Man, I think it. I think it was more so of the. It was in my blood. I, I you know, everyone always say since since they remember me. Even my mom asked, you know, coming up as a child, she said I was always banging mm. on on something. So you know, they they got me drums. You know, okay. they they got me a little a little place set. I, I think it was a Smurf set. I remember my first kit was a little Smurf kit. A Smurf kit. <laughs> from the Smurf. No. Yeah, yeah, the Smurf. As yeah. a kid, I love the Smurf. Yeah. I'm a Smurf. Yeah, it, you know, I'm an '80s baby, so you know. Oh, okay. oh both of y'all '80s babies, youngins. Yeah. Okay, it's all right. yeah. Both of y'all. What are you talking about? I wish I was. Oh, you ain't man. in the '80s. You my age? Oh. I'm, I'm, okay. yeah. <laughs> nah, I ain't old as you, but I'm. <laughs> you know, I remember the '70s. No, no, nah, nah, she can't remember. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But but look, look. You know what I mean? I remember when 80 happened. I can say that. I'm like, ooh, new decade. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I, I might not have been this. It was like around that cusp where you remember anything, like four or five, six. You know uh-huh. I mean? But at the same time, you know, you get a drum set. They say you was always drumming and stuff. Or you the kid mm-hmm. in school that was knocking on the table at lunchtime and somebody hitting Definitely the ball. Definitely was okay. banging on the table. Getting sent out the classroom. Yes, uh-huh. you know it's. It, it, but but to be in, in all honesty, it's one of those things, honestly, where I really just couldn't control it. And sometimes mm. it's it just one of those things where, you know, as musicians, you hear things in your head, and and before you know it, your hands and feet are your hand are, and hands and feet are gone, and yeah. you don't realize yeah. you're doing it. So yeah, sometimes I really didn't know that I was being disruptive, or you know mm-hmm. that I was I was. You no, know, when I when I came to is everybody around me dancing and bopping to whatever I was yeah. playing. Yeah, which which Wait. which could have made it real difficult for for a, a teacher to teach it. Now that I understand, you know, you know yeah. the the little uh, gift that I well I won't say little, but the gift that I possessed at that early age, you know, and, and being able to make people dance from the little beats that I was making on, yeah. on the desk, you know. Um, uh, but that goes that that goes to say, you know, um. You know, that's why I think for, for all children and, and, and people, you know, we all do different things. So I, I'm glad that, you know, there are schools for, you know, musicians and, you know, right. people of the arts now. Okay. Right, right. Hey, I got to say this real quick. Oh, so you were saying that people, you know, bop to the beat, um, mm. like the Pied Piper a little bit. My cousin, he's a drummer. And uh-huh. I remember coming home for elementary school and, you know, they would have like a band class. Uh-huh. And we would follow him home from school and he would have his snare. <laughs> like, And we would be behind him going down the street. Tim Coyce, shout out to Tim Coyce. Tim Coyce can play the drums and we would follow him home from school dancing that's- and he would just have his drums. But that's what he would do. He would bang on anything, drumsticks, yeah. pencils, whatever it was that can make some music. He did that. We did that. Yes, we did. So yeah. uh, I get it when you say that. Yeah. <laughs> that's how, that's so, how it goes. It does. It's just natural. When you got a natural, you know what I mean? It just, it affects other people. You know what I mean? And that's how you know it's real. When you can get other people to groove and you ain't even really trying to, there you go. That's why he's Bam Bam, oh. Uh, no. <laughs> Let me give you a different perspective. If you got a grown man playing the drums, have little kids uh-huh. follow them from school, and you're from West Virginia... You're gonna have some issues growing up. <laughs> she was in West Virginia. She no, didn't he tell you was small. No, he was uh, small. We were all in uh, elementary school. I think he that, was. I think right now, as an adult, can your cousin be within a thousand feet of a school? I just want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. I rebuke that in the name I'm, of Jesus. I, I, I don't know. I just came down. I started drumming. And the little kids start following me. And, and they just follow me all the way home. I don't even know. I hate him. That's why I don't like this guy sometimes. Oh anyway, go ahead. Yeah. But <laughs> anyway, that's what I was like. You're taking us somewhere in trauma. <laughs> we are going somewhere deep in trauma. We're not. Like, what are we uh, like <laughs> but but yes. Yeah. So you banging now, you know, you're getting down up there in Connecticut. You got some uh-huh. soul in there, probably, you know, some creativity. Mm-hmm. And now somebody had the, the wherewithal. Get that boy a drum set. Let's see what he do. And when you first start banging on the drums, did you know what to do? You're playing by ear? Or did somebody give you some sheet news and say, this is how you do it? I definitely was just playing by ear, man. Gotcha. And it was it was my grandmother's pots and pans that that pushed oh. them too. 
<laughs> Listen, he, he tearing up my pots and pans, get the boys yeah. some drums or something. Okay. So <laughs> were, you, were you ever inspired by, you know, some of those uh, TV exposés when they were showing um, kids, teenagers and young kids in Washington, D.C. playing on a, um, on a bucket? Yeah, I bucket. actually seen, what movie was that? I forget what movie it was. I, I forgot what movie it was, but there was a, a movie that I saw as a teenager of a, uh, I think the kid ended up playing with M- Mariah Carey. I, I forget his name, but um, the movie starts off with the kid playing on the bucket. And when I saw that, the next day I was outside with, with some tree branches in the bucket. He's <laughs> <laughs> out there. Oh, you think he's the only one? Yeah. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. I can go outside and get my grandfather fishing buckets. And, and, yeah. And what I was at. <laughs> the fishing bucket. All right. The white bucket. So now, yeah, you know buddy, yeah, the buddy. white bucket, the painter's yes. bucket. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so now that you know you you found your passion, you, you know, seeing that there's other kids maybe like you that are um, passionate about you know playing the drums, did you join a group in high school or middle school, or were you just solo? Ooh, I, to be honest, I think it was more so of the the church um, for me okay. uh, coming up in, in my early years, it was more so of being, uh, you know, exposed to, you know, the musicians that were around me and in and, and, and other cities, uh, I would say like New York, New Jersey um, areas that, that really got me going, uh. you know, that I started to watch and, 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 and emulate. Um, and to be honest, there was uh, a drummer here in, 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 in Connecticut, Big Mike Clemens, Mike Clemens, he was, okay. He was actually already on the road and touring with, you know, big name artists that, you know, caught my attention. Okay. So, yeah. So so now you, 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 you're emulating and picking up different things from other people because you're playing by ear. Uh, mm-hmm. Did you ever learn how to read music? I actually ended up, uh, well, funny story is uh, the school system here in, in Stratford, Connecticut. Um, you know, we had I had a few band, band teachers at the early age. They didn't really, uh, you know, I had band, but they weren't really, you know, teaching us sheet music. And whoa, whoa, whoa. Band, I thought that's what, what schools do. Like, I'm just saying from my perspective, because, you know, I've seen band and I've played... Like, I don't want to talk about it. it, was, it what you play? <laughs> well, it, was, it wasn't a good situation. Nothing. But, I, listen, I made all city three years. Knock it off. Wow. All, all city. Oh, wow. He my, lied. He lied. Singing. It's documented. It's documented. It's singing. Documented. <laughs> Anybody know all city bad for all the elementary schools? Yeah, big old was dead. Elementary and he put me school? next to the mic. <laughs> and he put me next to the mic. <laughs> I had the mic on the side. He said, Omar, you and Terrence go over there. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, and then it, was it was over. I had all the moves. I was like, oh, looking at all the girls. Listen, it ain't long before I'm going to get all of y'all. Like, I, that's how careful I was. I was telling them, I'm getting all of y'all. Wow. Then, that's long. I had the moves. I could dance. And I was like, oh, I could sing. I'm, I'm just trying to put it together. And then God said, wow. No more. Uh, uh, not uh, happening. Like, nah, not happening. Like, what I want to say is, um, <laughs> they weren't teaching you. Like sheet music, they were just like not not in my early not not in the early like elementary and middle okay. school. It wasn't really until I got to and and not not to say that I didn't have any great uh, music teachers. I I don't think that was a part of the curriculum at their time. At the time, right. it was just pretty much basic, you know, coming in learning different tunes and melodies and rhythms. I would say, but not until I really got to high school that um any type of reading start. And that was b- like bare minimum, even in high school. I think I, you know, when I joined the, the school band, it was just more so of learning a snare drum part or a bass drum part or, you know, the xylophones or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. But it wasn't, it wasn't too hands-on to like, you know, where there was like, <clears throat> excuse me, like jazz, like like the schools now, they have like the the jazz bands and and you right. know those those type of things. Um, yeah. just really just like marching band and, and concert band where I was at. 
Hey, you know, I, I played the recorder in the fourth grade. Come on, I think everybody yeah. had to. The, the, the one of the things you got to take it home and you had to boil it. And then, you know, <laughs> you can use it. And you pay Mary Had a Little Lamb. Yeah, I had one of those. But I did want to say this. A lot of the guys I know that grew up in the church often played by ear. And they mm-hmm. picked it up. So did you find like like uh, and, and sometimes they never learn to read music. And but they mm-hmm. are some of the best best drummers in the world. But they can't yeah. read music. Do you think that's a plus, or has that hindered some people? What is your kind of take on that? I I think it. I think it. it, it, it when you want to do music as a professional, at a mm-hmm. at a certain level, it, it depends on uh, the individual in, individual where you actually want to go with your career, what you want to do. Um, I know um, I actually did end up reading music in college, uh, mm, but right. not, not not until I got to college did I actually really learn how to read. You sure you were like drumline? You know, drumline. That's exactly line, how I was. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, I was about to go that, right right? <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> how I was. Um, and I actually ended up going to Berkeley College of Music. Which which, which was like the number one music school in the world, right? Yeah, and um, it it came down to uh, me being in a ensemble uh, one day where one of my professors realized that I couldn't read music, Mm. and the whole time he thought I could read music. I I had just adapted, you know, through the years as a church musician at being able to hear and play back what I heard. And you know, not until like drumline, they they say stop the song one right. day, and mm-hmm. went over something, and then told us to pick it up from a certain bar, and I I didn't know where didn't where, that, where that was. Wow! And that's where you know he came to me afterwards and was like, "Hey, listen, you know, you can't read," and I was like, "Nah, I can't read a drum set. I can I can read the snare drum part." And I think you know I was just sharing with someone. Um, for a lot of people, sometimes the the notes on the paper are intimidating. Um, but, mm. but the the way that I was taught is like, you know, he took this approach to you already know what's on the paper. You just don't know you know it. Yeah. And so I had right. to get familiar with what the note, notes and notations were on the paper. And that's literally how he taught me how to read music. Okay. So he took some things that you had prior knowledge of yeah. and then mm-hmm. related That's it true. and you probably was able to pick it up quicker. So I was able know. to pick it up because I was I, you know, once he started to point out, listen, what you see on the paper is that beat that you're playing. And I was like, Oh, really? He's like, That's exactly what it is. Yes. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. So he Hard so he gave one. you yeah. stuff and identified what you were playing, and then he was like, "Oh, that's what yes, that is." Sir. And so, yeah, that's mm, pretty awesome. Connected. So he, yes, yeah. he a, a true true educator, you know. That's yeah, what, yeah. yeah. So that's shout, out shout, to shout out, shout out to uh, Professor Winston McCall. Okay, <laughs> go ahead, All Professor right. Winston. All right, we got we got to ask some other questions now because. You go know, ahead, you, go ahead. you went you went to Berkeley, and you know that's in California mm-hmm. from Connecticut. All no, yep, yep, yep. I'm Boston, Boston, Mass. Yep. So you went, wait, all right, wait a minute. All right, you saying different things. So you went to Boston, then yeah. California? Okay, how do you, well, no, well let, let me clear that up for you. So a right, lot of people do. think that Berkeley, so there is a Berkeley in California, but that's not a music school. Oh, okay. Oh, so so there's because, only one Berkeley there. The Berkeley in, in Boston, Massachusetts is the music school. Gotcha. Thanks for okay. the Because yeah, when you just say Berkeley, it's like, and somebody like for me down here in North Carolina, I'm I'm in Charlotte right now. Okay. If, if you're oh, in, man, Charlotte, you in Charlotte, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on? You coming down? Here? Dude, I was in Charlotte last night with John Fantasia, man. Uh, uh, I knew it was last night. Yeah, we was at the Boat oh. Jacobs Arena. Yeah. Oh, he was right down there over of 74. Oh, I came God. down there. Oh, oh, man, I had no idea, oh, man. Man. Yeah. Yeah, y'all, y'all foul. Y'all, y'all, y'all foul. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all good, though. It's all good. Next you time, man. man. Next time I got you, bro. Thank you, sir. Right. Thank you, sir. And we, I got it, we, got it, we got it recorded on call. Recorded. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but if you say, you say USC. You know, like anywhere else except for North South North Carolina, South Carolina. If you say, "Yeah, I went to USC," you're thinking Southern Cal. But if oh. you come, if you're in North Carolina, South, right, South right, Carolina, right. you say USC, you mean University of South Carolina. Okay. Gotcha. So, so that's why when you say Berkeley, 
probably everywhere in the world, but they say, yeah, you mean yeah. California. I, I've I've got that so many times. Did you which one did you go to? Did you go to the one in California? Or did you go to the one in Boston? I'm like, it's only one and it's in Boston. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. And that's the music. All right. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So now I, I you're in. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, because you were talking about school, you went to Berkeley, and the, there, there's a lot of, like, HBCUs that have, like, a good band. Like, why did you choose Berkeley and not, you know, an You HBCU know what? There's a like whole that. story behind that. Really? It's we funny need that to hear you, that. It's funny that you say that. So my my grandfather is an alumni for uh, Florida A&M, FAMU. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. The yep, March yep. 100, shout out, FAMU. March 100, rally. <laughs> you know, so. Um, rally, yeah. As a kid growing up, my grandfather took me to homecoming one year. Oh God, how you and not? I got mm-hmm. to see, and I actually Yikes. got to see the March 100 in action. I think I had Man. to be about 12 or 13 years old. And old enough to know, and you ain't see that with what? And you, you went to Boston? <laughs> Listen, in my mind, at, at that time, I, I was going to FAMU to be in a, on that drum line. Nah, you was going there to be <laughs> next to the line. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you hear me? And, 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 and my grandfather even told me if I went to FAMU, he would get me whatever kind of car I wanted. And you, oh, uh, man. Uh, I kind of okay. messed up. I kind yeah, of you, messed up. Oh, well, hold up. You yeah, would have been... Yeah, he uh, can buy, no, he can buy all the cars he want nah, now. So just, you, no, you hold can. up. Just think about <laughs> it. At 18, 19 years old, man. having a car and a freshman, and yes. he had that northern little flavor to him, yeah, you yeah, had like 20 kids sway. right now. <laughs> <laughs> you had about 20 of them. The Florida girls were like, what that thing like, boss? <laughs> you know, like, that's what I say in Florida. Look, look, look. They different down there. They different. They, they different, different down, down, there down there in Tallahassee, baby. Oh, they done walked up yeah. there. What that thing do, boy? You like, huh, girl? You been... Huh? What that thing do, boy? <laughs> like, yeah. like yeah. <laughs> with that being said, you, you chose to go to Berkeley and Boston. Now you, you're up there with the artsy people in the Boston area because you know that uh what was it, Bebop? That was a big thing back oh, in yeah. the 60s, oh, in yeah. the 50s, 60s, you know, the beat nicks. I want to say that was one of the prime areas of the jazz movement, mm-hmm. and you know, up there. So now you up in there with some historical stuff and they teaching you how to read music and you playing, mm-hmm. but did your uh, gospel background, not background, but your gospel influence um, dictate what you played or were you, cause you were 80 baby. So you came up in hip hop and was that a, was that a, was that a, um, you know, a, a point where you was like being pulled in two different directions. Now, so I, the funny thing is, I had to audition to get into Berkeley. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I did the audition and I, I got a scholarship to go, and which was like a blessing. Um, but mm-hmm. that was one of the one of the things that they did in the audition. They made you play all these different styles of music, right? Mm-hmm. And little did I know, I thought it was just to see, you know, during the audition, you know, how good he is, you know, you know. But what they were actually doing, they were actually testing you to see your strengths and your weaknesses. Gotcha. And so once I did get into the school, I was I was told once, you know, you know, they 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 accepted me and I, I got into the school that I wouldn't be working on the things that I was strong at, which was the the R and B, the gospel, the you know, the funk. Mm, but it was right. the things that they saw where I was weak. Oh which, that is which a, was like the Latin and, and, and the and, and the Western music and you know, all those things, you know. Um and so no, so to, so to answer your question, it, it is one of those things where you no, know, we're going to take you out of your comfort and put you in, in something that you're not comfortable with playing. Yeah. Which which I I think worked out to my advantage because it opened up my ears and my creativity to other things that I wasn't I wasn't used to or, or exposed to. Yes, it probably expanded your opportunities as well because yes, you could play so many different things. So yes, yeah, I mm-hmm. understand that. That was a great move as far as their yeah. Um, that's their, you know, their their vision. That was awesome. So now you're up there, you're playing all the time, you're expanding, playing Western, probably bluegrass. You got all this stuff going on up there, right? <laughs> okay. How, how was it in Boston as a, a, a young Black artist? Because, you know, I hear stories about Boston, especially, you know, in the 90s. They did an expose about Harvard, and it okay. was on ABC News where 
Harvard, black Harvard students were getting racially profiled by the uh, Cambridge police and the Boston police. And they actually showed it. And I was, that's how I became aware of it. I was like, how the hell pulling over a kid from Harvard? It's like, no, they see a black man in a, you know, a, mm-hmm. a, you know, right. expensive car. They was like, oh, no, nah, we got to pull them over. And, you know, these gentlemen, they knew some people and it was like, nah, this happens all the time. And then they interviewed the officers and they was like, non- you know, like they like no, he he did something illegal. It was like, well, we seen every car on this road, you know, switch lanes on the train tracks. Why did you choose that car? He did something illegal. You know, like wow. like oh, we just happened to pull him. You know, we count every twenty of them, and then we pull the twentieth car over. No, it's like he did something illegal. It's like right now, and they showed <laughs> turn the camera and say that wow. car did something illegal. Now that car did something. They all doing the same thing. Why did you choose that? Wow, car? It was like they was under a bash bashful about what they were doing. I was like, man, Boston's different. And I remember being around the same age and I was like, okay. And then reading about some of the history there and about during the times of the sixties, where that was one of the places where, you know, Malcolm X, um, you know, lived for some time and was saying detention up there as well as um, when Martin Luther King was killed, they played that in the, um, what's my man down from DC? Um, I forget his name anyway, but you know, when he was hosting the benefit concert and James Brown went to Roxbury, well, Boston Roxbury area, uh-huh. it was doing a concert and trying to calm the tensions in the city down. So it was like, you wow. know, that, that area in Boston, it's like, yo, we keep all the black, all the black people primarily in Roxbury. You come out of Roxbury, you know, like we going to check you immediately. Like, yeah. nah, y'all ain't free to go where y'all want to. And I was like, right. if you come from somewhere like, well, I'm from Jersey. Like, like yo, we home with racial right. profiling. But mm-hmm. We go anywhere we want, but we know what time it is. So, like, right. a person from yourself, you're from Connecticut. You're mm-hmm. from Florida. You'd be, like, probably, like, no, nah, I'm from Stratford. I'm in Bridgeport. We kind of move seamlessly. Now you come to this city. What's your experience there as far as being a young Black man? So, actually, man, to be honest, um, I was blessed, actually, not to even run into any encounters Mm. with law officers or anything in Boston, um, not, not too much racial, um, you know, bias with anything that I had to experience, but I did hear, you know, you know, just be careful in, in, in Boston because, you know, they, they feel some type of way about you and, you know, the world, you know, don't see you as we see you. So just be Mm -hmm. careful. Um, and that is true, um, you know, when, when getting to know about Boston, you know, the um, the Roxbury and Dorchester area areas were, were the areas where they say, you know, my my people were, you know, hey, you know, you want to go to the hood, you know, Roxbury and Dorchester, you know, were, were the areas that they mm-hmm. were saying. Um, but then I also, you know, being and uh, and right there in Cambridge, schools little literally right in in, in the middle of uh, Mass Ave. Okay. Um, which is one of the major main, main streets there in, in Cambridge. And, uh, you know, we would um, move freely on, on the T. They had the, the they call it tri-rail there, but they call it the, the T. Okay. And um, and we would go to all the different, you know, BC and Boston College and, you know, uh, Northeastern, uh, you know, just, you know, all the different little parties that was going on. And, you know, we were moving like, you know, big crews, uh, you know, like, you know, big, I won't say crews, but groups. Uh, and mm-hmm. we, you know, go to the different parties and we never really experienced uh, anything as far as, um, you know, like I said, uh, uh, law officers or anything like that. But um, I will tell you about Boston. I was, in, uh, you know, I always been a, a New York fan. Uh, New York, everything for me from New York Giants. Okay. So what I'm York talking Yankees. about. What you know, talking I'm about. and then yeah. I'm, of course I'm a diehard Knicks fan. Okay, that's so, okay, that's right. And so being in Boston and wearing anything New York, like man, oh. like I think oh, I, I think wow. I, I, I was a more I, I was in more danger for wearing New York apparel <laughs> than being black. In, okay. in Connecticut. <laughs> Listen, and the school, and the school was actually, you know, one, one, one of the um, classes that I had wasn't too far from Fenway Park. Oh, and I, wow. I remember oh. one day I was, I was by Fenway Park, me and a couple of my friends, you know, we were walking, I think, right, maybe 
a few feet from where Fenway War was, mm-hmm. Fenway Park. And um, I remember I had this New York uh, Yankees jacket. It had all these different sparkle uh, NYs on it, different mm-hmm. colors. And um, I just heard some, I heard some people screaming and saying some stuff. You know, we thought something was going on. But when we turned around, it was a group of people chasing us. Oh, wow. <laughs> because I had a New That's York Yankees jacket crazy. on. crazy. <laughs> so, mm. so, so yeah, they they were really serious about. We don't want no Yankees up here. <laughs> right, can't <Concert> say hell. <laughs> so yeah, you know, but uh, you know, like I said, thank God I, I didn't have to experience uh anything like yeah. that while I was while I was there. Okay, and that and that's pretty awesome. And hopefully, you know, it, Boston, Cambridge, and that area has changed because it's become very di- more diverse. Yeah, me, more diverse. So that's pretty yeah. awesome to you know to know your experience as well. You know, everybody doesn't have you know that war story. Like, yeah, man, every day they was you know stop and frisk. <laughs> you know, it's like nah, yeah, dog. Yeah, no, they no, let no. me run freely <laughs> except when I had that Yankees <laughs> come on. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. So how do you know how to survive in Boston? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. yeah, for real. right. So now you are in Boston, and it, and would you consider um Berkeley like you know because you're saying that was in Cambridge. So now I know that mm-hmm. that must be the you know as I like to say Carnegie Mellon, how it is at University of Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. and so they mm-hmm. kind of, mm-hmm. Carnegie Mellon being a very prestigious school, but it's mm-hmm. super small and it's super elite. So Berkeley, would that be the caliber school or something similar to that situation because you're so close to um, Harvard? Yeah, yeah. So Ber- Berkeley was that like that school. Like um, even I, I think one of the um, what's the name of the um, one of the dance schools even used our, our cafeteria. Okay. Uh, you know because they didn't they didn't uh, the conservatory they actually called the uh, dance conservatory. Uh, but Berkeley was like one of those staples, definitely in, in, in a community that people knew, you know, oh, you, you say Berkeley, then, you know, OK. All yeah, right. you, you mm-hmm. the creme, creme de la creme of yeah. your, your, of your right, uh, right, you know, right, instrumentation. Right. I got you. So that's pretty awesome. So now you go in there, you know, um, was there any, you know, good looking ladies there? Because, you know, they play oh, instruments. Oh, man, they came from all over, man. They, all right. they, they came from all over, man. got international students uh, up there. I ain't saying that, but, you know, I was like, look, look, if you turn down fam, you in a car, <laughs> and then go there, <laughs> like, uh, I'm just keeping it 100. Well, you you know, honestly, it, it, what made me really, th- and, and, and my my path to music and, and uh, my my outlook on what I wanted to do and what, what music uh, came from an early age. So, you know, you're talking about um, someone who were, was around a lot of, you know, the, the big name uh, artists and gospel at, at an early mm-hmm. age. Um, I started playing with Tremaine Hawkins around 14, oh. 15 years old. Oh. Yeah. 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 Oh. oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, so, so you know so, about the Clark it, sisters, Tremaine Hawkins, oh, you know, yeah, it, it, John P. Key. All right. Yeah, it, it was pretty clear to me, you know, where, where what I wanted to do, but the opportunity, uh, you know, of, you know, going to Berkeley and getting the education, uh, just, you know, people pushed me to do that. You know, it's like, oh, you're awesome already, but if you go here they and you, 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 yeah, uh, you get this uh, underneath your belt, then you come back, you, you'll be untouchable. You can write your own, your, your yeah. own ticket. Sound, sound like uh, the uh, Jim Brown story in, uh, what you call it? Uh, what is it called? In the Express, when he said, listen, you're good, but if you come mm-hmm. here, he's going to make you better. Right, 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 <laughs> right. So I'm like, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. Right. And then so, in saying that, so do you, do, uh, I got a question really quick. Do you find that you like playing for gospel better than R&B or, or, or group, or do you have a preference since you've been on both sides of that? She's trying to be nice. Who's the checks like? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> that part. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. Uh, I know I'm playing a little better if I know another zero in that box. <laughs> Listen, yeah, that, that, that actually was, um, if, I'll be honest, if, you know, my, I love gospel music. Like, that's always going to be, that's For always sure. going to be my favorite style of music. I mean, because we cover everything. We cover every genre and, and gospel. So, Yep. You know, uh, and, and that's where just, you know, my heart, my passion, you know, is it, it, there. It's nothing like playing in church for me. 
You know, like it's, you know, I, I still play in church, you know, um, and, you know, I think that's a part of, you know, who I am as, as, a, as, a, as a person. That's, that's where I got to start. That's where I learned a lot. I mean, you know, it, 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 you talk to most musicians, they, they're going to tell you that's where they got their foundation. That's, that's where wow. they pretty much got their style. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I think with the, with, with the, with the, with the, the icons and, and the legends that I've met in the gospel industry, you know, I, I, I could never look at another industry and, and just say off, off the top or off the rip that, you know, uh, I'm going to choose that, that, that industry over, over gospel because they're, and, and even today, like most, most musicians that you see are all gospel musicians. I don't know. A lot of them, even the ones we've interviewed here on Crossbars, a lot of them have said, even singers, uh, we started in the church. Like we just did Denise Wee, it was started in the church. Yeah. And then I, you know, went over yeah. there, started in the church. And then, you know, church really didn't like it on some of them occasions. You know what I mean? Yeah. And some people was like, go. And some of them was like, don't do that. Don't go play that devil music. You know? Right. Uh, well, well, if you're doing that, we have, we have to discuss, were you getting side eyes and evil eyes? Because many of those artists that, you know, uh, what we like to say crossed over into the secular. Um, right. They were like, you going over there playing the devil's music? And were you getting the same type of vibe because you were playing in secular music as a musician? Well, well honestly, let me, let me, let me, I'll say it like this. My parents are preachers. Okay. So my, 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 my mom and my stepmother oh. um, are, 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 <laughs> Preachers, ministers. Uh, okay. <clears throat> they actually own, they own you know, had, had a church, had their own church now. Uh, but around that time, um, when I um, st- uh, got my, my first opportunity to go on the road, I was playing for, I don't know if you guys are, you know, into um, churches like that, or but uh, I was playing for one of, uh, a real big name bishop around the, around the, around the world, uh, by the name of Bishop Kenneth Mose senior. Okay. And, you know, anyone that knows anything about Bishop Kenneth Mose, he's connected with just about every artist and, and gospel. I mean, being under that ministry, I have seen everybody, I mean, every, everybody you can name, he brought to, to Connecticut. And so, mm. um, when I was actually, I tell the story, um, um, uh, about, how I got my, 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 my break, my, my big deal, my, my big break, my first opportunity to go on roll. And I was actually in church on, on a Wednesday night at Bible study when the phone call came and they were asking me to come back up to, um, the studio where I had audition because, um, Diddy was coming in the next day and he wanted to check me out and that I had to get back to, you know, to the rehearsal <laughs> spot and, and prepare for it tomorrow. And literally, um, God bless, God bless my cousin who just passed away recently, uh, Martin Parker. Um, we were playing at the church together. He 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 was a mentor to me. Uh, Martin, Martin was like, uh, you know, the, my big bro. And, you know, I got that call and, and you know, I, I jumped off the drums and, and I told him I had to leave. And he, he, he stopped me. He slowed me down. He said, hey, we're going to do it right. He said, um, we gonna, we're going to talk to Bishop and, you know, let Bishop know what's going on and then we'll leave. And so, you know, we, we sent word that I had to I had to leave. And my cousin drove me up to, to the, uh, back up to the studio in, in, in New York. And um, because I believe I did things uh, out of out of um, and and. and I would say and, and respect and, and order um, in return, things worked out in my favor. Okay. So you did it the right way. And, so, you know, so things happen. Yeah. and, and then, and then the Bishop that I was under, um, I, I would say that he, um, you know, was around a lot of musicians who, who, who traveled that same path that I was going in. Like you know, Stan, Stanley Brown came uh, from Bishop Moe's, um, um Stanley Brown, future musician, right? Stanley Brown, Gerald, Gerald Haywood. Um, you know that 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 they all Hezekiah Walker actually you know came from from the uh, bishop that I was under. So you know, mm. it, it, it wasn't foreign for them to see a musician leaving to go on 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 the road. 
Correct. Um, gotcha. But what he did do, um, and I always tell people with, with, that I'm, I'm glad that he did do it. Um, he covered me and he, he prayed for me. He gave me his blessings and told me that, you know, when I came off the road, I, I still had a home to come to. So so I, I would say I, I didn't deal oh, with yeah. the I didn't deal with the with, with the with the um the real ridicule of going on the road to play um R and B. Right. I got you. you yeah, know, so. um, but it was I was more forward thinking. I got you. But I did hear, yeah. you know, like the guys that came before me, uh mm-hmm. my cousin, uh Tom Powell and, and Big Mike Clemens, like, you know, like I'm saying, I, I, I you know, I mentioned earlier, they I seen what they went through when when they went on the road with uh Aaron Hall and, and Drew Hill and Mary oh, God. Wow. Yeah. When you Man. need me, call I, I, I seen, when you need me. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I, 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 I seen what they went, you know, what they had to go through. So it's like they actually took all, all the slack, you know, for when, when, when my time right. came. It was kind of normal now. Okay, I got you. Because the checks that like she was handing back bars, was, I that, love it. was those significantly different? I just want to know. You know, check, I'm, like, check in, I'm sorry. When you when you had back that you know the collection plate and them checks was a little different like yeah here go my Todd you know they yeah. might yeah, on, yeah, wait a minute yeah, go yeah, back yeah. on the round the, the the money the money <laughs> definitely definitely was uh different uh, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a funny story go back on the road <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um the the money is definitely uh different um and so I remember on. Um, I think it was my my first week uh, on on tour with Faith Evans. Um, by the way, my first tour was with Faith Evans. Um, oh, I, caught, I caught it. The first first tour Faith with, with, with Faith Evans. Your first oh, tour was with Faith up, Evans. How you resist Faith Evans? Faith, 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 Faith. So Faith, oh, Faith Evans, Faith. and then and then and then what was the 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 next? I know you did something with some Jaheem, and who who else? Jaheem was right at Jaheem was right after Faith Evans. Oh, she stayed in Jersey. Yeah, she yeah. stayed in Jersey. Yo, you know my man Boo man. He played the drums. He the most famous person from my my town that can play the drums. What's his name? Boo man. That's what Boo man. Call Boo man. I don't even I, know. I may name. know him. I yeah. I know a lot of I know a lot of drummers and musicians from Jersey. Yeah, got long uh, locks, you know, got the um, long locks. Sure uh, dude. Natalie Wilson and SOP was one of my favorite. Natalie group. Wilson and S- I, oh, SOP, yes. I had yeah, her old CD it. when she had the pink and the blue. Yeah. yeah. I was living in right. Jersey that t- when she came out with that CD. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when you say when you say Je- when you, when you say Jersey and you say drummer, yeah. the first name that comes to my mind is, is Jeff Low Davis. Jeff, Big Jeff, Jeff Low Davis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, uh, Uncle Jeff, we called him, but some people called him Jeff Lowe. Jeff Lowe. He, he was he was he was the godfather of gospel music in in, in, in Jersey. Okay, Jeff Lowe. Yeah. Jeff Jeff, right. Jeff Lowe Davis. Jeff Lowe was a Davis. drummer that in Jersey. That sounds country than a mug, okay. though. Yeah, he, uh, he, he, <laughs> he, he passed away a few, a few years oh, ago, but uh, you know his 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 stamp Rest his stamp is still there, man. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. Okay, good so good deal. Good deal. Okay, so now you know you, you're you're under a, a bishop that's forward thinking, saying go to the world, you know, do what you gotta mm-hmm. do, spread your wings, young man. And now you're right, right, encountering right. so many different things. Now I gotta know something because you just said uh-huh. something, and I gotta I gotta ask this question because I you know we uh-huh. think alternative of it. Right. If both your parents is you know the pastors, does that made you a wild boy? Because they say, like, children of bodies. Wow. The so, PKGs, you know, we skip clean over that, man. Alone. That's what they say. Yeah, hey, what, what, what I don't believe I, it, though. I don't believe it. I I actually, you know, I actually, I would say I was, I was, I was kind of rooted and grounded to where, you know, I was, I was able to move, you know, when I was here, you know, home. So it's kind of like one of those things where, you know, you, you keep somebody on a leash for a long time and then you let them loose, they'll they'll go crazy. But I don't I wasn't on the leash when I was oh, here. Okay. You know, gotcha. And so, um, Cars. Mm-hmm. But I will say, I will say that first tour that I did, oh mm-hmm. man, and, and, and people don't realize um <laughs> I was on the Usher 8701 tour. What the hell? That's crazy. I mean, how many wow. did you see coming thrown on the stage? Let's, let's, let's go. Was it, was it a, I'm gonna do an over-under. Was it over 100 or under? Like that's what man, listen, the, the stuff that we saw on, on, on that tour, like literally changed my life. 
Uh, <laughs> his but, eyes, the veil was removed, and his eyes was open. Uh, yeah, we had this. We had this thing. We we, we would say, "Me, me sight, me bloody eyes, me 2020." <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa. Hold up, did so, you have? Um, do you have someone back at home significant where you was like, "Nah, I got that at home," you know? I I'm did have home. a girlfriend at the time when I when hey, I went on my first job. tour. Turn and, up, uh, did you keep? Did you keep her? He always picking. Listen, we 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 went to a little little point where it got a little rocky. Oh, I, I know. Yeah, Talking yeah, to the girl that made yeah. it rocky. What was her? We name? went through. No, we went no, through, no. Oh, let's reveal. Rocky he might not know. We, we actually took a little break while I was on tour. Yeah, we you had to. <laughs> you had to. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say, I will so, say, man, um, you were strong. I think. <laughs> I think what really kept me uh, grounded and, and and kept things down to where I didn't go crazy was because the the mentor that I I was telling you guys about, Big Mike Clemens, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. he was actually playing drums for Usher on that tour. Okay. And so, mm-hmm. he, so he pretty much had a, a leash on how far he would, he would let things happen. And, yeah, you know, and, and yeah. so I always tell Accountability, people, um, yes. I always tell people uh, my first tour was one of the best tours because I was ex- able to experience tour life with with the person that I I, I grew up you know looking at as as my role model, okay. and so um, even even from you know I, I hate to say the word groupies because they're you know I mean but you know <laughs> even even from Beautiful. from that standpoint to a standpoint of learning how to, you know, um, hold your money, what to do with your money, um, mm, facts. what, what to do when temptations came outside of, of women, because they're, mm. and, and I, I tell people this all the time that, um, drugs and rock and roll. there, mm-hmm. there's no such thing as no on the road. What? There, there's the word. No, doesn't exist. Um, um yo, bam, so, bam. Yo, real talk, <laughs> you just gonna be hearing the new on the road show of crossbars going on tour because I wanna experience this. You said bro, there was no such thing as a no. The sir, word because people are rude. The word Excuse no me, does sir. Not exist. Continue about this fantasy that I've I, I'm on right now. Continue, <laughs> so, sir. So, so I I've always told people, you know, the truth about you know my boys one. Yo, did you see? I saw. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the stories that you hear are true. There, right. there are women that that are waiting for you. I mean, we will yeah, pull up. To the, we will pull up to the hotels, and there will literally be a group of a hundred women standing outside the hotels before we even checked in. And my okay. thing was, well, how the heck did they know we were coming to this hotel, or you know, those type of things? Right. So. Not only that, but when I say there's no such thing as no on the road, I mean as far as people who have addictions, as far as drugs and alcohol. Yeah, I mean, everything. There is no, whatever you're into, whatever your demon is, is there. Mm-hmm. And okay. so that's where having someone like Mike Clemens uh, came into and to play for me because it was like, no, we're not, you're not gonna do that. You're not gonna do that. Right. You're gonna stay away from that. You're gonna stay away from them. Awesome. And um, I'll say this. Um, on my first tour, you know, it was like one of those things where, you know, I, I'm 22. I'm I'm a young boy. I, I'm seeing things, I'm seeing, you know, you're talking about Usher, you're talking about models and and actors mm-hmm. and, and all type Everything. of women that you see on on on, on TV. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know, my brothers, you know, I, I call him my brother, um, Mike Clemens. He, he he said something to me and to one of uh, a group of us one day. Um, he said, you have to ask yourself this question. If you come into a city and you meet a lady, a young lady or the groupie or whoever it may be, and she wants to be with you after just meeting you for a few hours, how many other people has she has she done that to? Because guess what? You have to realize you're not the only concert that that that's been in town. Correct. So so if it if it's that easy for you to get it from her, you you probably don't want her because mm-hmm. you're gonna probably come back with some Bye. type of 
Yeah. Uh, you know, something that uh. you can't get rid of. Yeah. And so you can't spell. <laughs> listen, and I and I'm a scaredy cat. I'm 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 gonna tell you like that. I'm I'm a scaredy cat. You say anything, I, I'm afraid. Right. I, I, I want to keep my health, you know. Yeah. Uh just, and, 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 oh. just, and just stories, just stories that I've that I've heard and and you know, I have family members who who were diagnosed with uh AIDS and HIV. And so Growing up, you know, knowing about AIDS and HIV was one of those things that scared me. Yeah. And so for somebody mm-hmm. just to break it down for you to say, hey, you know what? Have, 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 have enough control to where you can do this for life and not for a short span of time because you mm-hmm. made a bad decision. Yeah. So that, that. so that was one of the things that always kept my head on the swivel and kept me, you know, you know, down, down to earth on, on that, on that aspect of things, okay. you know, the same, same, same thing with alcohol, same things with, with same thing with drugs. Now I was one who never really dabbled with drugs. You know, okay. I, I never, hey, I never, man, you smoke weed. Like, cause it seems like everybody smoke weed. <laughs> Listen, and, and I, I, I tried it and I didn't like the way it made me feel. So okay. I never, I never right. did it. You know, Absolutely. I had the opportunity, you know, Absolutely. listen, I, I seen I, I seen Snoop bring a, a briefcase on tour and yeah. it had every type of weed you can imagine. Uh, uh, yeah, he is the okay. connoisseur of connoisseur. Yeah, yeah, he is. Hold he on. got the flavors, he yeah, got the joy. Yeah, gotcha, yeah gotcha. man, listen, he, he had a briefcase and in, in, in the briefcase they had labels and yeah. little samples of what it, it looked like. I believe it. So, wow. so yeah. listen... <laughs> That's why I'm saying when I say whatever you're into, it's there. It's no such thing as no, because somebody knows somebody who can get yeah. you what you yeah. need. Gotcha. And, gotcha. And, and all these different cities, and that's from alcohol to, to you know what you name it. Whatever. Okay, yeah. we whatever. can't we we can't go Jay tonight because number one, my vice, I know, man, I, I'm I'm still struggling with. Snacks, what? <laughs> you know, I, I know I'll be going to different cities because you know New York, known for the pizza, you know right. Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> then I might go to Chicago, deep dish, then yeah. go to Cali, tacos, yeah. burritos. Like yeah, uh, like I'm gonna have a problem. You don't need to do small weed with that. You need to do snacks. no. I just I told you my bites. My oh, bites you just said oh, that you would snacks. Food and snacks. <laughs> well, if you go somewhere, you you in the deep south and they doing roasted chicken. And I'm like, there oh, you go. Me that. So, yeah. so a lot a lot of times when we go to the city, those are things where I take my energy and you know I say, hey, look, you know what I'm saying. What what is this city known for? When uh, you know Man. what are they known for? And start to get to to know. Hey, listen. Well, you know they're known for X, Y, and Z. Like like you were saying, Chicago's known. You know the the the, the deep dish and the, 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 the Chicago the hot dog. The, the, um, yeah. the, 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 what's the popcorn they have out there? That um, oh yeah yeah caramel oh, scary. yeah, yeah. crunch them up. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. popcorn. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah caramel popcorn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cheese. So, you know, oh my, that caramel cheek. There, there you go. There you go. The fingers be like. Yeah. Break the cheese off with them jokes. But I'm like, how, so like, good. For me, so, so good. as a drummer, you know, and no disrespect, but it seems like all the drummers are big. You know what I'm saying? Like, as white as ours. Yeah, well, and, and I was the skinny drummer. Arms. You was the skinny drummer. I was the skinny drummer, right? And, uh-huh. and so I started to see that. And I was like, maybe if I got a little bigger, I could be even better. <laughs> <laughs> and, because, no, and, and to be honest, to be honest, my my mentor was a big guy. He's That's about 300, 360 pounds. Okay, right. He's a big, big, big dude. Yeah, it's like <laughs> all drivers you see, like man, they're like the big one in the group. You, now you, you think know, about you, it. You know what I attribute to? You know, a lot of times, uh, and and that was something where, you know, at one point where, you know, something creeped up to, to, to musicians where uh, a lot of the guys that we were looking up to had started, you know. Uh, being, you know, diabetics, you know, a lot yeah. of musicians that, right. that we knew were, were being like, what, what's going on that a lot of musicians are becoming diabetics. And, oh, and you know, yeah. even I was threatened with the, with the scare of it, you know, like, yo, you, you may be pre-diabetic and borderline. And, gotcha. yeah, mm-hmm. border, yeah, borderline yeah. It, it was one of those things. Like I said, I'm, I'm scared when it comes to health. It, one of those things where they said that to me, and I turned and I shut everything down to like, yo, no, I'm, oh. I can't, I can't do that. I seen my grandmother struggle with diabetes and family members yeah. struggle, struggle with that. Sure. I don't want, I don't want those problems, you know. Yeah, and so, that. um, 
we were trying to bring awareness to um, mm. what causes uh, diabetes for most musicians is the the hours and and the time that you you're allowed you're well, not allowed to eat but that you're able to eat most right. times you, you 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 know now you you go to you know to uh sound check they have lunch at you know you, you eat the catering during lunch they may have catering uh before the show so you you're looking at maybe six six thirty seven o'clock you may be having dinner and then you're doing the show maybe from eight nine or or or, or ten. And then you get out of the show and what do you guys want to do? You want to eat, especially if you're on tour, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, so it's, 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 it's the, it's the late night eating. It's the fast food that you're eating. And then mm-hmm. you're eating, you're on the tour bus. What are you going to do? You're going to go lay down on, on the food. Gotcha. You're not going to exercise mm-hmm. and stuff like you're that. You're not going to exercise. I, right. I, 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 I'm glad you made that point. Uh, that, that's actually a great point because a lot of the, like you said, the Germans in this month, they're diabetic. They have some type of health. He's not saying that it's just that, but that right. makes a lot of sense to me, you know, when you say that. And saying that do, um, and one of the reasons I wanted to do, you know, this podcast with you is a lot of times, like you said, the artists are in the front, but the people who are holding all the artists down are in the back and in the band and in the mic tech and the singers and all of that. So do drummers feel left out or do musicians feel left out of, you know, cause you, you making them, you making them, you making the artists look good. I seen a live of you and you were uh-huh. jamming. It was, it was your tone and you was gone. I don't know where you went. You went somewhere in music. I was space, gone. <laughs> and I knew you went really, really left because your leg came up and you hit this down symbol and your eyes was closed and you would just feel, I was like, yep, right there. I think, he, I think he really lost it right there. He went gone. all the way in. <laughs> he, he, he's gone right there, you know, but in and, and saying all of that, do you ever feel like discounted? You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, nobody knows my name, you know, so I, anything like I've, that. Honestly, I I can say that I've never felt that way. Um, every artist that I've played with, from, and I, it's, it's a blessing, but I, well, except for one, and we'll, we'll talk about that, but uh <laughs> There, um, f- from that first tour, uh, Faith, she embraced us. She made us feel like the the stage was ours as well, just as much as mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's my stage, it's your stage as well. And so there was never, uh, you know, at uh, at that time, anything that I felt where I didn't feel a part of uh, the band or you know feel uh, appreciated. Um, most artists um, really, you know, take care of of their their band. Um, and, and, you know, um, coming from, 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 from faith and, and going with Jaheim, Jaheim was a little more, uh, strict. He was a little more strict with things. And, and I, at first we never understood why Jaheim would act the way. Jaheim wanted to put us on curfews. Like, yo, you gotta be in your room by this certain time. You know, yo, I don't want no chicks hanging around and. And at the time, we never really understood where he where he was coming from. But Jaheim is from, you know, uh, Brunswick, you know. Yeah, New Brunswick, Brunswick. Yeah. yeah, New Brunswick. He's, he's, mm-hmm. he's, he's, he's a tough boy. He had a tough uh, upbringing. And it was something where it was like, you know, because he knew what could happen, he was trying to keep things on a straight and narrow. But a- as young youngsters, you don't always see what somebody else see and, and if they don't take the time to explain to you why they they're saying certain things you wouldn't understand it so we was like oh you know you know that nigga bugging he's he's saying we can't have no, no girl you, can't, you got to be in the room by this time you know but he was saying and he said something to us one time because there was an incident with, with the young lady one time with with the entourage and because you know the entourage took advantage of this young lady, there was almost going to be a, you know, a rape, rape case. Yeah. Uh, a, 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 a case, uh, a rape case that, that was going to be, you know, coming around. And the only thing that I could think of was what he would always say. Like, I don't want people around because when it comes, when, when it, when it comes, they're not going to save the individual. Say Jaheim. They, right. They're, they're going to say, say yes. Jaheim's right. entourage. Yeah, and now right. that drags the artist into something that right. he had nothing to even do, to do you know, so gotcha. that, 
that's where I started to understand where he was coming from, where he, he was giving his instructions on, you know, listen, like, yo, I, I need y'all to move like this because this happens and then they shut down the tour. And guess what? Now, none of us making no bread. None of us making right, no money. Right. Right. And so for, for the reason that we're out here, never lose sight and track of the reason why you're out here is to, you gotcha. know, do this music or try to make some money. Okay. And so gotcha. at, the, at the point there, you know, he stopped carrying to, uh, the entourage and stopped letting the, 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 the homies come and, and, and you Smart. know. And, yeah. And so, um, but even like, get back to your, 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 your story, uh, your, your, your question. No, I've, I've never experienced um, an artist that, you know, or, or that, that feeling of not being a part or, or appreciated, but there was one artist that was really, really just different. And I, and I worked with Lauren Hale for a little bit and that was, hey. just a, that was different. It, it was different. It was a different experience. Um, and you know, I don't know, maybe something in, 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 in her life at that point had her the way she was, but it was, it's just one of those things where, you know, it, it, it's a little controlling. It's okay. very, really controlling. Um, you know, you couldn't call her Lauren. You had to call her Miss Hill, you know. Um, Even if you were older than her? Yeah, yeah. No, well, and, and anybody that she came into contact with and, and her and her crew, I you, know, you were, you were okay. to, you know, um, you know, address her as Miss Hill. Okay. At all times. Try, I mean, sure. okay. I remember, I remember one of the guys that, you know, we, we auditioned. I, I think I almost, to be honest, I think I auditioned for Lauren Hill for almost a month. How you audition for a month? Audition for a, a month? A, um, audition for a month. Man. And with, with <laughs> After the second time, I'm like, nah, you're going another way. Was, that, was this a paid audition? <laughs> <laughs> no, right. what, what, what was happening was, it was like, she would call these 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 auditions and you know like you know you maybe three a week and then another three next week and she would bring it she was bringing in uh, a bunch of different musicians so every time you came in to the audition there was another set of people that you had to go through. Oh, so she was doing the the what's it called oh. WWE Gladiator. It could only be Dude, one. It, it, <laughs> so you... it, it, was, it, it was the most extreme thing that I ever saw to the point where I was about to just quit and say, "Yo, just say I don't know want to right. Yo, I'm, I don't want to do this no more. You know, and, and, and the, the the guys that were around me was like, "Yo, dude, now nah, listen, this this is gonna look good on your resume. You want this one?" Yeah, and you know, so that's that's what that's what made me fight through. You know, you know, going through and, and, and getting you know. To the prize at the end of uh, you know becoming the drummer, um. Uh, but like I said, after becoming the drummer and having to deal with some of some of the things with Lauren, it just got to uh, you know I, I'll tell this one story. We were in um in London. We were about to do the Mobile Awards. Okay. And uh, we got to London this this one day, and you know um of course you know they had told us what to pack as far as what we were gonna wear on stage. But then we got there and she switched and she said you know. We're in London. We should just we should dress like people from London. And so we were thinking that, hey, okay, well, we're gonna go on the shopping spree. <laughs> get some new clothes, we're gonna buy some clothes. She's gonna get us, you know, some, you know, somebody uh, uh you know, somebody's gonna from fashion gonna come give us some clothes or something. Um, I don't know what the what the places are called, but you know the places that hold the the um the um clothes for like the plays and you know costumes no okay. like costumes yeah. like costumes yeah okay so just she, she, she arranged costumes. this she arranged this <laughs> thing where we go in this one day and she 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 comes in and she's literally like telling us what she's gonna have us wear and she's like you pick up that jacket there you pick up that you pick up those boots you pick up and when I tell you we look like a bunch of <laughs> English this, they, I, I, the video, <laughs> listen, the video is on YouTube. Man, um, it was so bad. I'm I'm gonna just tell you what I had on. When, when she finished with me, you have on a skirt, don't they? Oh hell no. Nah. When, <laughs> when she finished, when she finished with I'm me, fashion. right? This is one of the most embarrassing things I think I've ever had to encounter on the road. When she finished dressing me, I had a pair of cowboy boots on. 
<laughs> I had uh, a pair of sweats. They were supposed to be red sweats, but they were so faded, they looked pink. I had a varsity blue and yellow jacket. And then she she had me put my, my Yankee hat <laughs> to the back. And I mean, we all look hideous. <laughs> like we all just look hideous. And some of our homies was playing with uh John Legend at the time. So we're walking out, we're walking to the stage, man. These dudes was coming out the dressing room. Oh, they I mean, clowning these y'all. Dudes they was clowning y'all. To the ground in tears <laughs> laughing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, straight, my friend, and I see you around. Like, Cowboy yeah. boots and, and sweat. Uh, yo, they, they were in tears. Like, yo, what do y'all have on? Right. We was like, yo, man, shut up. You know, and so <laughs> we're walking to stage. And they're, they're, you know, we're getting ready to take our, our places. They're, they're letting us know how countdown is going to go because this was a, a, a show that was going to be on, on TV. TV yeah. And so they're telling us we're going to count down. And, you know, when we do this, X, Y, and Z. And at that moment, Lauren's assistant come to, 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 to the band and says, she's changed the song. So the stuff that we had been rehearsing and, and, and at the rehearsals and, and mind you, this was my first time. Gotta be ready. Lauren. Gotta gotta be ready. All times, you gotta be ready. She switched it. And we were like, we never heard that right. song. We never went over none of these songs that she said she wanted to do. And we sent word. <laughs> we sent word that, hey, you might be thinking about one of your other bands, but you remember, we only went over <laughs> X, Y, and Z. <laughs> so we don't know those tunes. She said, if you're real musicians, you'll figure it out. Mm, and so God. what cats did, mm. I swear, I swear, somebody pulled out their phone and we went to YouTube and, and started listening to the tunes. Mm. And as we're listening to the tunes, they're literally telling us to take our space, our, our, our spots on stage that they're going to start shooting in 10 and they're counting down. So we're listening to like, just, just get enough of what the tunes sound like and what our parts wow. were. And we really literally went out there and recorded that way and so for me you know that was like one of the scariest moments I, I I think I've ever experienced as you know a musician uh and to the point where we walked off stage and everybody just had this like unsure look on our face like, <laughs> like what just what happened? did that just happen what were yeah, they looking like, what, because they were like you did good or it was like it was so like disjointed well, we did good but it, it, it's, it's 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 a, it's a thing as like like a music a, a yeah. thing where you know, you don't know something. Somebody throws it on you at the last minute. You don't know, and then she, she, she's so Lawrence. She's 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 a perfectionist. Uh, so meticulous. I got you. Yeah, she's such a perfectionist. It was more so of yo, she gonna spaz because you know it didn't sound. Ain't gonna hit the right, right look, right? But if, if so she's so a we perfectionist, why would she do that last minute? If she's a, such a perfectionist, that's that sounds like you know you being nice, but it sounds like yo, that's unprofessional. It, it was very oh, unprofessional. <laughs> and, and and so we, we went back to the dressing room, right? And, and no one was saying anything in the dressing room, I think. Everybody was just sitting in our, you know, different areas. And we get a knock on the door as assistant. They're saying, Lauren wants you guys to come to the room. So we know at this point we're about to get fussed out. Like, she's yeah. going to go crazy. And we go in the room, and she's not going crazy. She's in good mood. She's, she's dancing around the room. She's singing. And then <laughs> something that I never experienced with her, she actually gave us a compliment. Mm. And so and I then, remember, um, I remember um, Damian Marley and, and a couple of the Marleys were in the room, and you know they they actually came and imagine. started giving us props and you know asking where we were from, and you know it was like oh this this turned out different, but um it. On, the, on that ride home, I had to say to the uh, assistant, that's why I told them, you know, thank you for the opportunity, but, you know, I can't, I can't work under yeah, it conditions. Uh, that type of pressure. But you, under the pressure, it didn't mean anything, but you, but, but you know what? I, I just got a little epiphany from a different perspective. If she didn't trust that you guys could do it, I don't think she would have did it. Right. She auditioned due for all that time. Yeah. She yeah. knew that you had, she know you stuck in there because she could have quit. 
You yeah. know what I mean? I understand what you're saying. That pressure to live up to and the change and all that, that doesn't feel good for anything in life to get a last minute change, whether it's music or clothes or poetry or yeah. parent at a, at a play with a kid, you know, anything like that. But I think that she did trust you guys in the sense to switch it like that, knowing yeah. that how you feel and how you dress is also a part of, you know, you playing and feeling good and, and all of that. And to disrupt your mind, which is a little bit, you know, and you're still able to come through. To her, mm-hmm. that's like the challenge. You know what I mean? I don't know what she went through, but I I, I did want to say that. And since we're talking about Lauren Hill, we're going on the females. Just want to ask you a couple questions about female drummers. Uh-huh. You know, I know we got Sheila E. What's your take on like you know female drummers? Because there's another drummer. Her name is Have you heard of her? her name is Her name is Bianca Richardson. She's young. She's out of She's out of Cali, but they call her B Rich Drum. And she's uh-huh. out of Cali. Uh-huh. Have you heard of her? I think but I may have heard like of her. Michelle and some other people or whatever. But I, she's I know exactly who you're talking about. And I also know the Pocket Queen. Uh, I know Miss Miss Monica Drums. I know Cora Coleman. That's right. Um, Go girls. Yes, yes, female and, drummers. And, 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 and Sheila uh, yes. is one one of my one of my you know people that I grew up just because Sheila was fine. You know, not only because she played drums, but Sheila was, Sheila was fine. Uh-uh. She, she yeah. still, she, she, she uh-uh. still. And you were talking, to, wait a minute, he was talking about the pocket too. You know what I mean? You know, how, how, how how's your pocket? You know what I mean? My pocket? What's, what's your pocket like? Pause. Well, listen, you, you know, I, <laughs> Pause. That's all we're gonna do for that, and you can continue. I'm saying they say the drummer, and they like a drummer. If you can't keep, you can't stay in the pocket. You don't yeah, know how to can't. play it. You know what uh, I mean? You can get overexcited what? and emotional and all that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Where well, your pocket at, really, Bam Bam Parker? Well, I grew up in the when I first started playing. I was I was into court. You know, they the only thing they would let me play was the quartet, quartet music. You know. And so anybody that knows anything about a quartet drummer, you got to have pockets to, to play quartet. That's it. Oh, they, don't need you to be, they don't need you to do nothing else but just just hold, yeah. hold that, 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 that two and four. And so I think being around, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the quartet scene, and then again, uh, I'll go back to uh, people like Tremaine Hawkins and being around people like Tremaine Hawkins and Edwin and, and Walter Hawkins uh, at that early age really showed Classic. me Classic. what it was really about. You know, like, you know, a lot a lot of drummers get caught up on playing fields and, you know, all the crazy stuff. But I saw at the early age, you know, the people that were working weren't, they weren't playing all that crazy stuff. It was, they was handling business. Well, um, you're talking about, I'll oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. That, uh, that, that's was... pocket, you know, you know. That's uh, pocket. All right, all right, we were checking. Pocket. <laughs> so um, my my first um, Faith Evans, my first chance to play the Essence Festival um, was at, uh, um, in, in New Orleans at the uh, Superdome. And that year, um, our MD, uh, Kern Brantley, you know, Kern was MD, you know, had been MDing for a bunch of the big name artists for years. Him and his brother, mm-hmm. uh, Kern and Valdez Brantley are like legends in, in you know, the wow. R&B and gospel uh, industry. And so I'm learning. Um, we were there, we were doing sound check and little did I know behind us getting ready to, to sound check was a uh, baby face band. And the drummer at the time that was playing for I baby face was um the king Ricky Lawson. Ricky uh, Lawson. Remember by the name of Ricky, Ricky Lawson. Lawson. And so Ricky Lawson was one of the guys that you know you'll pick up a magazine as a kid and look in the drum magazine, you'll see mm-hmm. Ricky Lawson in the drum magazine. Mm-hmm. And so Ricky also played for, I mean, you name it. Uh he was Michael Jackson's drummer. And there was a story mm-hmm. uh that Michael Jackson told one time of, you know, because Ricky's nickname was the timekeeper. Oh, yeah, he got mm. to keep trying. Okay. Absolutely. Right. He, gotcha. His name was a timekeeper, and because he worked with the, the artist that he did, Michael Jackson gave him that stamp. Uh, Rolex mm. had reached out to, to him and, and started to endorse him as the oh. timekeeper. So when you, Ricky, what they call them. when you see, when you see him, Ricky, Ricky would have two Rolexes on, on, on each hand. Oh, he got too much time on his hands. Got gotcha. <laughs> he, he had two Rolexes at... On, on, on his wrist, when you seen Uncle Ricky, yeah. Ricky, he had the Ricky so, Lawson. Little, little did I know, uh, and this was my first time ever even seeing the guy in person. Um, little did I know they were watching our sound check, and so when we got off sound check, 
um, Kern, he was speaking with Ricky, and then Ricky told Kern to call me over. And when he called me over, he, he, he asked me, do you know who this is? And I said, do I know, dude? Of course I know who this is, you know? <laughs> and it was like one of those things, like if I, if I ever ever had to say I was starstruck, I was starstruck at that moment. Because I was meeting Bye. Ricky Lawson. Bye. All right. So I heard, I heard what you just said, brother, but she was talking about like women empowerment stuff. I want uh-huh. right? Come on, uh, don't, no, hate, no, don't, no, hate, no, don't hate, don't hate, don't hate, don't hate, don't hate, don't hate. You know what I mean? Listen, if a female drummer say let's battle, because that's what drummers do. Just like drum line, mm. like yo, I can take him out, and you got beat by a female drummer. Is it look? Is, is it frowned upon, or are they just as good as the men? I think female drummers is just as good. Okay. I oh, think I, I think that. I think I think I think female drummers is just as good. It's, it's just your take on <laughs> you know what what Who you're you looking like? for. Right, you know, right, um, right. You know, <laughs> I know some I know some girls that can get down. I I want. I went to school with two of the like dopest female uh, drummers, uh, Nikki Glassby, who actually uh, was Beyonce's drummer. Oh, okay, that's how I was like, I heard mm-hmm. Yeah, and 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 uh, I went with the, this girl, uh, Nicole Sewell. She was from California, but these two girls was like dope. You know, not to mention that I'm married Shout to out. a female drummer. You got two drummers? Oh, boy, okay. go ahead. Why so who, uh, uh, you talking about? You know, watch this. Yo, what you mean? Uh, my, my, my wife is better. Oh, he said who's better? better. Drummer. Nah, I'm getting yeah. in trouble. Who better? She's better. Oh, she. I, I I couldn't stand her when we was kids because she was good. Uh, <laughs> I could. I, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. There you better. go. Yeah, yeah but I know. Scared. Yeah, yeah. Scared. Hey, <laughs> you you were you were talking about endorsements. I'm backing up again. Do you have any endorsements with any type of drum equipment or anything? I do have endorsements now. Um, literally, um, I started receiving endorsements that. That that on my first tour, mm. so uh, I was endorsed by Yamaha drums and Zildjian cymbals, and actually mm-hmm. uh, when I when I left uh, when I left Berkeley, um, I had met the one of my professors wanted me to meet one of the artist relation people at Zildjian uh, cymbals, and he told I, I mean because my professor you know uh, Rick, Rick Constantine he I think he was endorsed with Zildjian at the time. And it was one of those things where uh, I was in class one day with, with Rick and, you know, coming from where I was coming from, I didn't have a bunch of equipment. It's just like I had a symbol, this type of symbol. I had a bunch of mismatch stuff, but I had this one particular <laughs> symbol. It was, it was a K custom symbol. And I remember I was in his class one day. I had bought, I bought my symbols and I cracked the symbol and I almost literally started to cry in the class. And he was like, yo, what's up? And I was like, Yo, dudes, you don't understand. This, this was my, this was my favorite one right here. Like, you forget the <laughs> other ones. I love this one right here, and, and I just cracked it. And he was like, "Oh man, let me see. You know what the model of the symbol was?" And and he and he was like, "Yo, man, it is, it, 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 it's cool, man. I know some people, man. I can get you another one." And so, um, he set up that day. He th- he told me he, he ended up calling the rep and, um. Literally the next day, he reached out to me. He, t- he pulled up to my um my building where I was at, the dorm. And he, t- he told me, hey, come outside, man. I got somebody I want you to meet. And I went outside. And when I when I went outside, um, he was standing, he was standing there with this gentleman and he introduced him. He said, Hey, this is my buddy Jim McGathy from Zildjian. He's like, This is the artist relation guy from Zildjian. He said, I told I told him about you, and I told him, you know, what happened, and, and we got a little gift for you. Mm-hmm. They opened right. up the trunk and there were two two bags filled with symbols that he had brought me. And, and he told me at that point, he said, anything that you need for from, from me, just call me and you got it. So um that was oh. that was my very first endorsement uh through um through through my um my professor um Jim, uh Rick Considine. And um you know, after that one was Yamaha. Then I, I actually got a, a, a stick endorsement with uh, Johnny Rab, who was actually a, a, a drummer out of Texas. And um, you know, mm-hmm. he, he, he saw fit to that. you know endorse endorse me with um, right. with his sticks. And then um, I, I got signed. Metal? to... This oh, they were wood. Wood. Okay. I don't, I I don't like metal sticks. Okay. Is that you know, you? I just found out in the last probably decade that sticks had different weight. Yeah. <laughs> 
I didn't know yeah. that. I just thought yeah. sticks were sticks. I'm like, so why do you use this bigger stick versus this stick? You know, I, I didn't know that yeah. there were drum weights. Like, why, yeah. why do you need different stick weights? So, like, so, so some people, right, some some people's hands are different. You have drummers who have small hands, you have drummers with big hands. You have certain certain drummers that the, if the stick feels a certain way, like there's different lengths there, you know, even the tips on the drums, sometimes something, you know, they, they right. want a different type of tip. Like, you know, so it's just, it's just, it's what each drummer prefer. And so, um, you know, it's one mm-hmm. of those things where I, the 5A, 5A stick was my, my go-to. It was like, oh, I like this, the weight is cool. I, I'm comfortable with it. So I always was a, a 5A drummer until recently, my hands were like, start, I started developing these cramps while I was playing. Carpet tunnel. And so, mm-hmm. you know, w- once I started reaching okay. out and I was talking to some of my, my drummer buddies, they were saying, yo, you may need a, a bigger stick or a heavier stick. And it was like, you know, you know, our, you know, as you get older, things start to change. And, and so I left the 5A stick and I started using 5B, which is uh, a little bigger and uh, a, a, a little thicker and a, a little a little more weight. And right. all, of, all, all my issues with my hands stopped. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, right. Bill, so right, now right, you're right. looking at like the stick, and you feeling some kind of like okay, this artist may you know you may uh, play a certain way, like you mm-hmm. know R and B is a different right. melody. But how many sticks do you do you keep with you per performance? <laughs> right. Oh man, Good I I, have, I love that. So so I've gotten to the point now, and I I know this is gonna sound real Hollywood. It's gonna sound it's gonna sound worse than what it really is. I carry a backpack with me and I keep sticks in the backpack. What right? the hell? A so you got know, like 20 sticks? sticks? Yeah, I have a whole backpack. But I've gotten to the point <laughs> where if I didn't even want to bring sticks, they already have sticks for me there. Yeah, I'm yeah. thinking like, all right, I keep two sets, you know, some break, I just pick it right up. Because you know, one of my friends, he's a drummer, and he was like, uh, now nah, I keep it right in my sock. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you hand. break. You gotta get it. You gotta you know, get you gotta another get right one ready. It and gotta be seamless. Right. You say air drum with one hand, and you try to keep up. You pull that <laughs> yeah. You said air drum. You said air drum. Yeah, because they're breaking. I'm gonna hashtag that like, on this one. Air he tried drum. to keep it up, and it, you know, be a little off <laughs> because he was the one that taught me. He said the whole band. When you have the band, you have everybody, uh, but the yeah. drummer keeps the time. So yeah, we drum is the heartbeat. Yeah, it's the heartbeat. We drive the car, baby. We drive yeah, the yeah. car. So yeah. when you got it, you know, he was explaining this to me. <laughs> I was like, okay, I get you. Yeah, man. But um, I, I we it. have I this thing it. that we do, right? So uh-huh. every yeah. guest, we ask them, you know, some a series of questions, and you can say okay. one or the other, or you can say both, or you can even say neither. Okay. okay? So let me okay. give you an example. Uh, real quick, uh, something that you know you said an artist. So I say um, Michael Jackson or Prince. Michael Jackson. Okay, so you can say one or the other, no, 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 no. or both. Okay, Michael Jackson. All right. So I'm gonna ask you a series okay. of questions. Some of them get a little harder, easier, depends on who you are. All right. So let's go. Oh, get ready. Right. We'll get ready. Get ready. Right. Real quick, get one <laughs> hard. Joe or Jaheen? Joe. Ooh. Okay. Hey. All right. Thing to do. Okay. Uh, Lauren Hill. Or Faith Evans? Faith. All right. Um, oh, Tremaine Hawkins or Yolanda Adams? Tremaine Hawkins. All right. Mm-hmm. Mint condition or the Ohio players? Mint condition. And that's not fair because mint condition is my favorite band. <laughs> hey! <laughs> yeah, so people will eat you up for that one. Stokely, okay. Stokely's right. that guy. Stokely's that guy. Now we go a little old school on you. All right. We're gonna go a little old school here. Um uh Max Brown or Joe Roach. Mm. What's what's the first Hold one? On. Um was it Max Brown? These are old school drummers. Yeah, Max Roach. Yeah, Max yeah, Roach, yeah. Max Roach, yeah. Okay. Okay, you got Max Roach? I got you. And um, what is it? Philly Joe Brown? Yeah, that's the guy of Philly. Anyway, let's keep on going. Um, cinnamon toast crunch or fruit loops. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. All right. LeBron James or Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan. I'm so, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to say both on that. Let me clarify why I'm going to say both. Uh-huh. 
This is this is why I'm gonna say both. The game has literally changed from when we watch Michael and those guys play. The uh, game was so much more aggressive. Like you, like you can't even hand check a guy these days. Correct. That was bang, bang, check. Do you do you imagine how many points <laughs> Jordan would have scored if there was no hand checking rules? Yeah, they took it out <laughs> during his career because of what. <laughs> well, <laughs> Dude, I mean, well, he had to face people like Carl Malone. Okay, okay. And- we, 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 to do we, we got some more questions. All right. So you said both. I got I, you. I'm going to Michael Jordan. Go I, I say Michael Jordan. Okay. All right. We're going to go there. Let's see. Let's see what he do. All right. <laughs> um, you know, uh, New England clam chowder or chicken noodle? Clam chowder. Oh, he's got Boston in him. I was okay. going to say chicken noodle okay. soup with a soda. Yeah, let's, let's get him in trouble with his Boston <laughs> people. All right. Larry Bird <laughs> or Allen Iverson? Allen Iverson. Because mm. he's 80, baby. That's why I was actually like, oh, yeah. Over Bird? Okay. <laughs> see, see what's going to happen when you go back to Boston. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Iverson changed the face of the game, man. Oh, watch this. Florida A&M's band. Or North Carolina A&T's band? Mm. Florida. I got to go with Florida. Boy, you... Grandpa, shout out to Grandpa. Trump line, man, Trump line. All right, all right, all right. So we're going to finish up uh, (laughs) real quick, all right? Um, You know, I already said you're a Yankees fan, but let's let's see. Let's go go with some obvious things, all right? Beyonce or Rihanna? Who? Beyonce. Okay. Y- right. Y'all know she getting culture okay. killed right now. Right. <laughs> I see, man. Oh, uh-huh. God. They're they- killing her right now. And let's see where you really go. Chicago pizza or New York pizza? Ooh, I'm going to have to go with New York pizza. Thank you, sir. All oh. right, all right. We're going to end on a good note. <laughs> good job. Good job. <laughs> but, but I will say this. Connecticut beating both of them. Oh, what? what yeah, go, 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 go look that one up. No. Go, go look that one up. No. Go, go look that one Connecticut up. Connecticut pizza? I've been up there. I've been up I'm there. A, I'm going to have up there. You know, you know they say I'm, Connecticut I'm going to Google it. I'm going to Google it. He said Connecticut pizza. Like me, like real talk, right? I'm from everywhere in Jersey. Like I got uh-huh. Central Jersey, North Jersey, even South Jersey. And I've been all through New York and then even Philly. South Jersey got the best cheese things. Jersey got the best pizza. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm from <laughs> Jersey. So when I went to New York, I said, wow, I think New York just has the bigger slices. But I said, as oh, far they as they yeah, it's like it, a half a pie yeah, for one slice. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I will give y'all that. Y'all, y'all slices in New York. A New yeah. York slice of pizza is like three slices of pizza. It's like, yeah, it you is. Know, all, you, know, you roll but, that sucker up. Yeah, and, oh, okay. it's all, all right, good, all right. though. It's all good, you know. But uh, I, I can't say, you know, like when we play this game and just throw different names out, it's always interesting to see people's perspective. So, like, that's right. why it's like sometimes <laughs> throw you off, like Ohio players and men condition, like, wait, they ain't the same era. I know. But, right. you know, if you're a lover of music, you know the instrumentation yeah. of both of them were at a high level. Yeah, you know, yeah, and, and when you said that one, um, make, make condition like raised me, man. Yeah, like to, to, you know, condition. like like the musicians like Chris Daddy Dave, who was one of the drummers from uh, Mint Condition, uh, and Stokely is the drummer himself, uh, who who studied mm. jazz and African uh, music. Um, you know, so I knew a little more about the the group uh, outside of just you know. Somebody who's listening, I, I, you know, Stokely, he can play, and I knew a lot about the guys. So, okay. uh, and just the yeah. music that they were bringing to the table, you know, for me at that time was like, yo, you know what? It's something different right. about them. Okay, it was something, that. something different about okay. that making ditch and sound. Yeah, who, who, it, who, is, who, it is. Who was your favorite um, artist to work with? Like, you know, you work with a lot of artists, some very talented and famous people, but which one you said, man, I really, because we got a rhythm, we got a cadence, we got this telepathy going on. It seems like it's like a yeah. hand in a glove. I have to give you two. Okay. Uh, Faith Evans and Joe. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I, I give you those two because it's it was just a, a family thing where Faith wouldn't go out to an after party unless we went with her. That's what's up. Joe is the um, same way. Joe don't want to. Joe, Joe don't want to have fun if his band can't have fun. Like that's what's up. 
you know, if I can't bring my if I can't bring my guys with me, I don't I don't want to do it. Okay. You know, wow. um, so it, 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 it was one of those joke. things where I when I started work work, work with Joe, um, I would say thank you for everything. Like, oh my God, like thank you. Like, you know, and it, and it, because some some things that I had experienced Correct. with Other different artists, artists yes. that at that point where I got with Joe and, right. and they were doing what they were doing, it was like. Like yo, you you serious? You want us, or you're you're paying for our meals? Like wait, like you paid the you paid the bill yesterday. You're gonna pay for the bill again. It's one of those things mm. where, like, I've learned so much from Joe, not just as an artist, but just as a black male. Uh, mm. I, I, I know oh, you guys Lord. probably have, uh, you know, a, a, a time, but I want to share this this one last story uh, with you. Sure, sure, sure. We, sure. we as Black men, I'm gonna say we as black men, we get a stigma about our, our about ourselves. You know, we like to dress in our 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 our, our, our dress, uh, the way you know. I wouldn't say hood clothes, but urban our urban gear, right? Mm-hmm. And so, right. since since I had been with Joe, Joe's very clean, like it's always suited and booted, right? Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. he said to us one day, he said, um. You know, once you get past a certain age, I don't think a man should be in, you know, like certain Jeez. certain wear. Okay, gotcha. You shouldn't look. You shouldn't look like a teenager as a a 35, 40 year old man. You should look like a 35, 40 year old man at, at that age. And so, looking at how people, you know, were, were um, giving Joe certain respect. Like we walk, you know, he said, you know what? I walk through the airport and they respect me. And, and sometimes I don't like how they treat you guys. When I see mm. them, you know, oh. they, 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 you guys walk up to, and now you look like a group, uh, like you look like a big group a of gang. people. You're a gang. Looking at, like, you know, <laughs> they don't like, right. well, and he said, so let's try something. We were going overseas one time. He said, um, yo, man, I want everybody dressed in some hard bottoms and some slacks with a button up. Or a suit, whatever you know, blazer, a, gotcha. a trench. He was like, and watch the res- watch the, the the respect that we get when we walk through the airport. And literally, from the time we walked in the airport as a group dressed that way, people we could not we couldn't get two feet without people stopping to ask who we were. Wow! Mm. And so he That's literally right. changed my whole perspective on how. Just what you look like, and and people eyesight can change how they view you, Thanks. how they how they how they interact with you, and the mm-hmm. respect that they give you. I go, I I'll say this. I I get more, uh, I get I get more of a of of, of of respect from people when I'm dressed in my daily, you know, day to day, you know. And he said, "You dress how you feel." So mm-hmm. if you get up in the morning, uh, you and you have nothing to do. Still put on that suit and, and them hard bottoms and carry yourself as if you were going to a business meeting. He mm-hmm. said, and then later right. on that That's energy, right. That's right. that energy that you that you that that you're gonna carry is gonna is, is gonna manifest in some way. And literally, right. because you dress that way, somebody's gonna stop you along uh, along you to find out who you are, who you where are. you're going, right. you know, and you never know who you're gonna stop and meet. And so that had like mm. changed my right. whole outlook. So if you if you ever look at any of our videos when we're performing with Joe, most times you see us, we're suited and booted. Yes, that's oh. a good deal. I think I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna start implementing that. That's, I, I've heard that's that. Right, that's right, that's right. But I've always been like, I want to be comfortable. Me you know too. I, mean? I want to be comfortable. You got so time always, to be comfortable every no, now and then. But no, it's, it's always back a in the day. Like no, exactly. my, my favorite think thing back, is yeah, think, think back, back in the back day when you look at all these old school yes. movies and videos. Them them women had them little ways. They was, even if they didn't, they clothes was iron. Their hair was this. Yes. Their hats was this. Their shoes was, and they ain't even had no money, but they look good. My grandma was like that. You know what I mean? She always was fresh, clean, and, and nice clothes. They was dressed up. They didn't wear sneakers and 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 boots and jeans and overalls every day. I I'll say this as as a kid growing up, I always wanted to be like the smooth dude that I saw with the suits and his hair slicked back and oh. green cut. <laughs> he had his jewelry on, you know. Oh you know, yeah, so, yeah. And, and to be honest, I like. 
I think that's what's wrong with our our the society today. Like our kids don't know what it what it means to to, to look good and, and present yourself that way. Like you know, back in the day, you ain't see no men like my grandfather and those guys. They, to this day, when they get dressed, they dress like they're going somewhere. They're, yep. like, he's had on jeans, high. but he had on some hard bottoms and some he jeans. Had he, some had hard hard bottoms. Bottoms. he had jeans, he had on jeans, some hard had bottoms. A and you know wait a minute, he be shining yeah. them shoes too. He uh, had that that shoe shoe polish. When you know they the old, they have creases. Shout out to Granddaddy Sheldon with a pair of yeah. black like black patent leather shoes. And, and he know. had on the the t shirt with the undershirt under the. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Facts. 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 All right, man. That's 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 super 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 but while super I dope, have man. You here, I, I just want to say please. thank you for having me on the show. This was amazing, and hopefully we can do this soon again. I, yeah, I yeah. hope so. We gotta we gotta know who you plan for. So next time we can show yeah. up for the concert. We yo, ain't yo, gonna if you ain't saw it, you be like, oh, well, well. Here go, I'm here. I'm gonna be here. Yeah. I got you. Look, you. and I'm gonna be suited and booted since you said that. I got you, bro. <laughs> God, I'm just suited and booted. I got this new shirt I've been dying to wear. I, I look, I haven't, I've had this shirt for almost eight months now. Wow, come on, okay. oh, come on, oh. It's a white on white paisley shiny shirt. Ooh. I've been dying to wear it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I want to see the picture months. of this. Yeah. I want to see you picture when oh. you do that. And speaking of clothes, oh, well, did your shirt? I was like, wow, that was a real interesting. I, I love that. Unless really dope. This, this shirt I actually got from Evelyn's. It's a, it's an urban store. Okay, Evelyn. I was. I look like you know, like I make my own clothes. Like you get real artistic. You know, you talk to artsy people. Like nah, I make all my clothes. Like, oh, all right, man. My bad. Yeah, I, I, I ain't going that far. Man. You ain't going that far. All right, I'm just. I ain't going that far. Nah, I just took some things. I was like, whoa. All right, brother. Hey, so, so, um, any any drummer magic you need to tell us, or any little last words you have, any for any aspiring drummers or anything? Yes, the drummers got um, a drummer secret. Give me something. I always, you know, um, I didn't even get into, I, I got a uh, music school that I've just recently opened. Uh, it's there called the Breed Academy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're, we're uh, coming, uh, it's a bunch of uh, musicians and produ producers and engineers who are uh, working in the industry right now who have names and, you know, um, we felt like in our community, there was no outlets for the kids who, who had talent. Where we are, mm, boy. and so we um we opened up the, the the breed academy where we're we're taking our our children in the city who um you know may not have that opportunity for parents to to send them to a music school or take uh private lessons we're we're we're, we're in the, in our in the city and we're we're trying to make a difference through music um you know to inspire that next generation let them know that you know. Dreams do come true because we're a product of of, of dreamers, okay. you know. Like I, if you, I, I would have never thought my life would have went in in this direction. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I, I would I'd be touring the world doing what I'm doing, you know, um, what I love for for a living. And so, you know, we want to give back to our community by letting them know that yo, you can dream, you can dream and have dreams and and and, and wish because you know sometimes they do come true. I, I'm I'm a product. Of, of, of that Why? and so um I've, i we just feel like if, if we have the blueprint of how to be successful and to get to where we are why not come and give it to the kid this, this next generation you know that's that that's our duty somebody did it for me so now it's my right. job to do it for, for others you know right. and so that that's that's pretty much what the, what the school is about but i all th this is my saying if you if you stay ready, you never have to get ready. That's and right. Be, stay ready. Yes, and, be, and because and because I was ready when the opportunity came. Wow. Yes. I never yes. had to get ready, and I was yes. able to Thank seize you, the Lord. moment. I was able to seize the moment, and that moment yes. changed my life. Okay. I felt that in my spirit. I did just now. I'm, I'm ready. Oh, you, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. Um, oh, the same way. No, See, no, I, would, I know, but I want to know where is this school? Where located? is the school? Is it in Connecticut? It's in Connecticut, New Haven, okay. Connecticut. New Haven. All New right, Haven, there we Connecticut. Go. Yes. Okay. All right. Is there to something? You got a, You got a, You got a website. People just go check it out and look at oh, it. Yes, and... yes, you can. www. Uh, www. Uh, the Breed Academy. Mm -hmm. The Breed. Is it Academy. Dot org or dot com? Dot com. 
Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, good deal. All right. So it's pretty awesome. Um, I like to say thank you. It was such a pleasure. You know, Man, it's honor, brother. Again. Absolutely. So um, yeah, that was all. Go ahead, Jay. Oh, that's it. All I gotta say, anywhere okay. we can find you on like YouTube, Instagram, with your oh, handles yeah. on um, any of them. My IG, my IG is um B A M S D A number one. And then um 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 Facebook, I'm Willie Bam Bam Parker. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, 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 I know on, on IG. Wait, hold on. What's the IG again? I'm typing it in right now. What's the IG? Oh, uh, B as in Brian, uh-huh. A as in Adam, uh-huh. M as in Mark, S as in Sam. D as a David, A as an Adam, the number one. Yeah, I think I already friended you on, on I was because I was searching for you on Instagram. So you might have a cross bars on that. So we got I think got I you. I really pretty got much you. I did, I did, I did. So thank you, thank you so much. You can also find us everybody where cross bars is Carol S S B A R Z. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, our website, everything we got. Thank you again, Miss Mr. Willie Bam Bam Parker for blessing oh, our you. podcast, man. Much okay. love, much success. We're gonna be looking forward to them tickets. We're going to, yeah, we're going to get back. I got we you. We're gonna be backstage and see how it go there. I just want to fill the drumstick bag. You know what I mean? I got you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much, and we are out. Peace. Peace.